Well, we have SmackDown Live on Fox from this past Friday evening from Atlanta, Georgia. And the show opened up, as is customary most weeks, with a recap of last week. This one highlighted the three-on-two handicap match with the bloodline taking on AJ Styles, Randy Orton, and Paul Heyman. Roman Reigns walks into the arena. He is upset, says after last week, nothing has been fixed. And then Solo Sokoa lets us all know he's going to fix it tonight. In the ring, Nick Aldis was there to welcome the sold-out crowd to a contract signing for the upcoming Royal Rumble four-way title match. All three baby faces who I mentioned before, L.A. Knight, A.J. Styles, Randy Orton, enter, put pen to paper individually. It took Paul 10 Heyman, minutes to do all of these ring entrances. This was an I'm, easy show to get through. I'm not complaining, brother. No. Paul Heyman came out. He said, look, Roman Reigns, he's not signing that contract. Nick Aldis, much to his credit, says, hey, that's fine. He's got a backup plan. That match, it's just going to be a three-way for the vacant title at the Royal Rumble. Of course, Paul Heyman is not going to let this go down with a, without a fight. He approaches the ringside apron. L.A. Knight cuts him off. A.J. and L.A. Knight then get into a heated argument. A.J. punches L.A. Knight. The two brawl to the back amongst the officials. And then Randy Orton pulls Paul in by his tie. And he tells him he's going to put down Solo Sokoa tonight and then reintroduce Roman Reigns to the most dangerous three letters in the WWE, R-K-O. Hey, Tom, when you were uh, the New Japan Strong Openweight Champion, did you ever carry that uh, giant metal belt through the, uh, the metal detector at the airport? I had one of my minions do it. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't help but notice when uh, Roman Reigns and Paul showed up, they sauntered right on through that thing, and they didn't set it off with that big, giant metal belt. So, hmm. Interesting. We came back from commercial. AJ Styles asked Nick Aldis to face LA Knight tonight, and that match was made official. Then the LWO, Carlito, Cruz del Toro, and Joaquin Wild took on Legato del Fantasma. And it's SmackDown, so of course we got a great set of dives by the Babyface team that sent us to commercial. And when we came back, they were getting beat up. Legato had isolated Joaquin Wild. Hey, at least we got the hot tag during the actual body of the show and not the uh, commercial break. That's an improvement. After some double teaming at the hands of Legato, Wild hit a big tornado DDT. He made that hot tag. To Carlito, who landed some strikes, a drop kick, big spine buster for two. Things broke down quickly. Big move after big move. And then Carlito hit a a tree slam of all things. A throwback to Big Vinny V. And then Escobar. Sure that's what it was. <laughs> Escobar blind tagged in. Carlito hit a backstabber on Umberto and then snuck behind Carlito to roll him up to get the pretty cool win. This Carlito is definitely slower than he used to be. I mean, man, it's noticeable. He's twice as old as he was when he yeah, began, Brian. I guess so. It was a long time he was gone. Lastly, the Street Profits, they had a promo. They told Cross and the Authors of Pain that they're going to show them true intimidation soon. We then had Pretty Deadly take on the team of Tyler Bate and what was set to be Butch. Kit Wilson and Elton Prince are backstage before the match. They let Kayla know that they're ready, and they're not going to be surprised tonight by somebody who's not even on the roster like they were last week. Then we got the return. Well, they made sure ago. to point out. They made sure to point out we're not just pretty boys; we're pretty smart boys, and we have never been more prepared to face Tyler Bate and Butch. But it was not Butch. Of course, it was the return of the bruiserweight, Pete Dunn, Who and got a big pop. It's funny. It's like the exact same guy, exact same gear, works the exact same way. But they put Pete Dunn on the screen, and he got a big pop like it was a debut of a new superstar. Well, he's no longer dressed like a 1920 newsboy. Well, they got rid of that a while ago, but now he's, now he's back to Pete Dunn. Tyler Bate did an airplane spin. He got beat up. With some double teams by Pretty Deadly. He hit an exploder, tagged in Pete Dunn. 
Dunn hit a buzzsaw kick to the back of the head. Gave pretty deadly a suplex onto the other one. Bait dove over the top onto one of the pretty deadly gentlemen. And then he Dunn hit, hit Kit. Dunn hit the bitter end on, on Elton. Prince and defeated Pretty Deadly. Once again, after the match, Pretty Deadly were backstage with Kayla complaining about this new person, Pete Dunn. Yeah. Who showed up tonight. Who is this guy? And then we had a special edition of the KO show, which kind of reminded me of most of them. This one featured Kevin Owens and Logan Paul as his guest. KO put over Logan Paul for not being like all the other celebrities who come in. Instead, Logan Paul stuck around, and now look at him. He's the U.S. champion. But KO says that doesn't make him like one of them. It doesn't make him like a Rey Mysterio. It doesn't make him a real wrestler. Logan says, look, that's fine because I'm one of one. You know, I don't want to I don't want to be like you guys. KO talks about Logan being protected, afforded all these opportunities to be successful. Logan says KO is the one being protected. KO says he's not going to have his cast on at the Rumble. And the Maverick uses this chance to punch KO in the face. Owens then works his way up to his feet. Double legs Logan who flees to the outside and is able to slam KO's broken right hand into the post ahead of their title match. This was a long talking segment, but there were like there were some good points. There was there was Logan saying, you know, the reason I'm even a wrestler is because of you. And Kevin goes, What are you talking about? And so Kevin, there's a clip of Kevin giving him a stunner three years ago at WrestleMania. And Logan says, You embarrassed me in front of seventy thousand people. You hit me with a stunner, all these people cheered. I knew I had to prove to you and everyone that I belonged here. And Kevin goes, I don't even remember that happened. <laughs> and then later, Logan's doing this promo. And, you know, when Kevin talks about how you're not a Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Logan says, I'm one of one. He goes, I'm your son's favorite superstar. I'm an innovator, actor, boxer. The list goes on and on. Billionaire, he says, on paper. So he's not actually a billionaire. He made sure to add on paper. And then we had the big brawl there at the end. And this Logan is a, uh, this guy is a great heel. I got to say, he is an unlikable fella. Big surprise. Yeah. His Him and Kevin Owens actually was... should be great. That's what it's going to yes. be. Yes. Roman was in the locker room berating Jimmy. Yeet or no yeet. Solo steps up, says, look, last week was on him. And this week, he's going to step up and fix it. We then had the people's main event. Caden Carter and Katana Chance. You might want to back away from the mic. Mike. Defending. We should back away from the mic. Tag titles against the Unholy Union, as they have now been Hey, named. you want to talk about freaking rankings? How in God's name did Isla Don and Alba Fire get a championship match? I haven't seen him do anything except come out of a box. I have also not seen any logical online debate sparked because of this title shot. No, but. it was only three minutes. Damage control ringside with Bailey on commentary. Dawn and Fire attacked at the bell. The champs did some moves. Fire and Dawn almost stole it after Dawn landed a blind strike from the floor. Caden Carter had a rebound destroyer off the ropes. And then Mike Zepper Vivi, I want you to tell the truth here. Was this not... The best keg stand that the champions have hit of all time. Not saying much, but okay, maybe. You're the maybe. worst unbiased reporter I've ever seen. It went they, perfect. It's fine. Perfect. It was fine. fine. For they the first their, time. Wow, they, they hit their move for the first time correctly. <laughs> it was not what the first time. What champions these people God, are. Come on. Oh they, and they botched it one time because the other person was too far away. You know what's going to be the, the biggest insult about all of this? And I'm going to check Russellnomics right now. This is going to be the highest rated quarter of the entire show, isn't it? It probably Watch is. this for some I'll reason. I'll bring it up tomorrow. Oh, my God. I tuned in to see the Kabuki Warriors dance with the belts afterwards. Yeah, what the heck was that? <laughs> I'll tell you who does not look like she likes to dance is Kyrie Sane. <laughs> the club was then backstage. They let AJ Styles know they still got his back tonight. If he needs it, which was interesting. We had a final Testament video package. Apparently, my, Brian, 
and Mike, it still is spooky season because we got the unholy union, the final testament. What's next? I, know. I still can't believe they got Carl to come out for a show. Been a while for him. When's the last time he was on TV? <laughs> Cross said they're uncivilized disruptors who make people nervous. He said next week there's a new game they're going to play, and they're going to see Lashley and the Prophets face-to-face to settle who's the almighty. Carmelo as, Hayes is... As an old man, I like the fact that Paul Ellering is there. I have no idea why he is there, since Karrion <laughs> Cross seems to be doing his role as well, but... The fact that Kevin Sullivan has popped up in these videos and that Paul Elring has been brought back with these guys, I'm I I got to give it to him with that. The final testament has a mouthpiece leader with Kevin Cross, Karrion Cross. They have a manager who says nothing with Paul Ellering, and they have a valet who also does not speak with Scarlett. Mm. And then have AOP ever said a word? I think they've said a couple of promos. Mm. Yeah. Carmelo Hayes was backstage with Kathy Kelly after last week's match with Austin Theory went awry. Theory and Waller approached. Carmelo called out Theory for this Friday in Miami. Theory said, he's got a lot going on next week. But Waller was like, no. No, you don't. Yeah. Actually, you'll face Carmelo Hayes. AJ Styles took on LA Knight. It went back and forth. Knight had things in control. He was bouncing AJ's head off the announce desk. But Jimmy came down the aisle way. This gives AJ time to land an enziguri tonight. But Solo appears. This was a distraction by Jimmy. Solo appears with his hand around Knight's neck. Hits the Samoan spike. Attacks AJ. Beats him down. The club nowhere to be seen. And Randy Orton is called out by Solo Sokoa. We go to commercial. We come back, and we have the main event. Solo still in the ring. He and Randy fight right away. Orton has things locked up in control. He hits the draping DDT, sets up for the RKO. But once again, here comes Jimmy Uso. Yeet or no yeet down the aisle. I believe there's no yeet on this run-in. L.A. Knight comes running out. He stops Jimmy. Jimmy tries to retreat after a few blows, but AJ Styles comes out. He beats up Jimmy. In the ring, Solo tried to sneak up with the spike on Randy Orton, but Orton pinned him with the RKO. Pretty pedestrian. And then Styles Knight got in the ring. There was some back and forth. Roman Reigns showed up. He Superman punched Randy Orton, set up for the spear, but as he was about to hit it, the RKO hit, and Randy Orton stood tall. And it took us to commercial, Wrestling Observer Live. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.